Hi guys, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop. I left off in the last video having the rear case pretty much together. Now I'm going to show you how to preload, if you want to call it that, the bearings. These are not bushings. Don't be confused. When you buy stuff from Parts Tree, they call everything a bearing. They call one of these a bearing. This is your nylon bushing that goes in the front end for a kingpin. So don't be confused. A bearing either has needle rollers in it or ball bearings in it. The only bearings that are in most all the snappers are in the chain case. They have two ball bearings and they have two needle bearings and most of them that's all they have for actual bearings this machine has actual ball bearings in it now i'm going to show you how to preload them now this is not tight yet and i have side play that is the play between the face of the bearing and the end of the differential with all the gears stacked in there and bolted together. That's where this is coming from. Now what you want to do, you want to pull this tight so you're pinching that thrust washer between the bearing and the differential. Just hold it. You don't have to put a clamp or anything on it. But you want to hold it this way. Then you want to put your locking collar on. The locking collar has a elliptical hole in it. That means it's not on center. The hole is shifted off center. And so is the outer race of the bearing. That's shifted off center. So when you put the two together with the axle in there, they're going to lock together. And that's what holds the axle solid to the bearing so when the axle turns it's actually turning the ball bearing and not slipping inside the inner race so we want to get that on there we want to pull the axle towards you and get a punch and lock that down And once you get it tapped so it's snug, check it. There should be no movement. And you want to make sure you get it tapped down so it's tight. Then you want to get yourself a 5 32nd Allen wrench and lock down this set screw so it doesn't vibrate loose on you. Now this set screw is not digging into the axle. It's clamping on to the inner race that sticks out past the rest of the bearing. Now you can spin it around and do the same to the other side. Now you don't have to worry about moving the axle because it's already locked in position. It can't go anywhere. And this is moving a little bit. That seems to be the play in the differential. <clears throat> so we're going to put this on here. I want to push on this. If you have any play in your differential, we want to push on that and tighten that up. And just lock it down the same as you did the other side. I get a little bit bigger punch here. I 
grab my Allen wrench. Now you're going to need a 1 8 inch Allen wrench. And tighten this set screw up. I should redo that. That was backed out of there a ways. Goodness. Now, my axle is tight. I don't have any side plate. But I do have side play in the hexagon shaft. And I'll show you the difference between a machine with bearings and a machine with bushings when I get up there on that display. The only way you can check to see if you have side play in your hexagon tube, I have this in, we'll put this in fifth gear so I have a little more room here, is to take the boot off and grab onto the hexagon shaft. Now I've got quite a bit of play in here. You don't want that. If you don't take care of the play in the hexagon shaft, it's going to allow the shaft to float inside of the differential. And what that's going to do is it's going to pull the chain too close to your cover and it's going to cut a slot in your cover. I showed you this one as I was putting it together. It had a groove in it. That was because he had side play, but he didn't know it because the axle is held solid. It was not through the case, so it wasn't an issue and I reused his case cover. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the side plate in the hexagon shaft. I have four thrust washers I bought from Parts Tree. Here's the part numbers if you're interested. Now they don't come in a C shape anymore. They come solid. I guess they figure we're smart enough to cut them with a pair of scissors. So I stick the scissors through the hole and I cut away from the washer. I don't want to cut this way and have it snap and go too far. So I'm just going to cut a slot in all four of these. Now I'm going to snap them on over the axle. That's the tricky part. Maybe I'll turn this a little bit and try to figure out how you can see what we're doing. The thrust washer with the fingers on it sometimes does not want to stay inside of the hexagon shaft. I just spread these open and snap them on. There's two. There's three. There's four, and it looks like I can use one more. I'm going to have to go dig one out of my box. Now another thing I want to do is this shift handle. I wish I would have saved my thrust washer that goes between this nylon 
bushing inside of the tube and the handle. This is so thin and you, you can see how this is only touching, let me get something to point with, just here on this point. I thought about taking this and belt sanding a flat on there so it would bear better against this washer. But what we're going to do is we're just going to put another washer in there that's a little bit bigger. So we're going to compress this spring. should be enough room. I'm going to put this washer in there I made. That's a little bit bigger. And it should give us a better bearing surface for that to fit up against. That is a tight fit. Cotter key was pretty well shot anyway, so we're going to put a new one in here and bend that. And we can release this pressure. That's bearing much better on that washer than it was on that other one. Now if you need to work on your machine and you would like one of these spring compressors, I just happen to have some of these for sale if you're interested. And that was the brainstorm of Rodney Sweet Sweetham, I believe is his last name, and how you pronounce it. I'm not sure about that. But I think what I'm going to do is send him 10% of the sales for giving us that idea. So, now we got all the side play out. Well, I need one more washer, I think. And I th we got a better setup for our shift handle. Now we're going to go over to the model and I'll show you what I was talking about. Okay, on the model, this has bushings. So the axle is never going to be held solid it's going to move and it's it's going to move as much as the side play you have down here. I do not have a washer in there because I want to keep the side play for demonstration purposes. But here is where the differential butts up against the face of the bushing. Now this is a bushing. You can see the crack there. It goes back and forth. And that moves the same amount as what my shaft is moving. So once I shove this towards the differential to keep the chain away from the case, you can see the chain moving back and forth that will eventually get enough play 
it will ruin the case. This one had a big groove cut in it, so that's why I used this cover to make a cutaway of it. Right through here, it was cut completely through the cover. So once I shoved this towards the face of that bushing, and I put my shims in over on this side, that eliminates all of the side play. And these machines are simple to tell if you have a problem. They can be sitting on their wheels. You just grab onto the seat and try to shove the machine side to side. That's the first thing I do when I look for a machine to buy. <clears throat> so that's it for this video. The next one we're going to be putting that front end together and getting it in the rear case. The last thing I'm going to do is put the cables in. I have a lot of people that ask me about the cables. How do you do it? How do you tighten them? How do you adjust them? I get a million questions on brake and clutch cables. So that'll be the last thing I do. So I can, maybe I'll just do a video just on the brake cable and clutch cable. Some machines have both. If you have two pedals. If you have one pedal, you still have a clutch cable and a brake cable. They're just joined together just behind the front seat and just in front of the engine. There's a little black plastic piece that connects the two. And it's, it's very simple to adjust them. Just, these machines are so simplistic, they're actually difficult. People think it is so difficult to work on one of these. This is the most well-engineered and designed and simplistic machine you will ever own. And if one of these taken care of don't last you 30 years, you're doing something wrong. So please subscribe, I need your help. Thumbs up on the good videos. Hey, they gotta all be good. Helps also. If you have a friend with a snapper, share a video with them. Get him to come over and look at this channel and see how much information he can learn from it. So until next time, work safe, have fun, and keep on snapping. We'll talk to you soon. So long.